Hello everyone, this is Andrew McNair from Swan Capital with our August 2024 Swan Report. In this month's video, we're going to discuss some recent headlines that have influenced the financial markets. And my plan is to distill this information for you as a retiree and give you our perspective on what these developments may mean for you over the next few months ahead. Now, as always, please stay tuned at the end of this video for some required disclosure statements. At Swan Capital, our market outlook remains cautious because of world conflicts and higher consumer credit coupled with higher interest rates. There was a lot of hand-wringing and worry a couple weeks ago with people screaming for an emergency Fed meeting after volatility had picked up and the market sharply declined earlier this month. So what drove all of this mayhem? Well, primarily it's because of the concerns that the economy was sliding into a recession. And surprisingly, weaker than expected job numbers had rolled in and manufacturing reports triggered recessionary concerns overseas as well, especially in Japan. If you look at the Nikkei, it was actually falling 12.4% in its one worst day loss since Black Monday of October 1987. And this pales in comparison, we had escalating conflicts in the Middle East, which added to the tension. A Hezbollah rocket attacked and killed Israeli children at a soccer match, which prompted Israel to assassinate several high-level Hamas and Hezbollah officials, one of which was killed in Iran. So potential retaliation from Iran, plus concerns about Israel's response and potential impact on the world stage with world energy markets and economies weighed heavily on markets. Now closer to home, the recent shakeup in the US presidential race has also affected markets. We're headed into what could be the strangest election in US history and at a minimum, probably our lifetimes. When you sit and contemplate all the negative factors that have weighed on the markets, it's somewhat surprising that this month wasn't worse. This S&P 500 rebounded and recovered from its 8% decline. This sort of market action isn't unusual, but it seems the violence and the speed of the sell-off really on the back of a sleepy and undramatic first half that really threw people off. We've got used to just a market that kept on going up for almost a solid six months. And all of a sudden we had volatility overnight where we had none before. And there was uncertainty and reasonable fear. But fast forward just one week later, we not only made up back all of our losses, but we're once more closing in on a record highs in volatility that is back to levels prior to all the mayhem. Now, if we look at inflation, that is on everyone's mind. If we look at the PPI, the producer price index, and the CPI, the consumer price index, if you look at the readings for July, both showed that inflation is declining, but is inching downward. It's not dropping in big strokes. It's actually just inching downward in an almost painfully slow manner. The decline from 3% to 2.9% in CPI year over year is an important psychological threshold for the markets. Just like the unemployment number, rising above 4% was important and signaled to analysts that we had crossed a line that should cause concern. An inflation print that's below 3% is significant to the Fed, analysts, and the market overall. The problem is it was only down 0.1%, which is not materially different from 3.0 or 3.1, and will not prompt the Fed to cut more aggressively than the 25 basis points that markets have already guessed that would happen at the September meeting. We still believe that a deteriorating jobs market is the thing that will cause the Fed to accelerate its rate cutting schedule. Now, the major issue is that if we continue to see jobs unravel at the pace that we've been over the past five months, we will likely be sliding into a real recession and inflation will ultimately take care of itself naturally via decline in spending because people are unemployed. Now, the challenge is that the Fed has a problem on its hand. It's juggling one ball in one hand is inflation and price stability, let alone the other two balls of jobs and overall 
inflation. So trying to thread the needle of mitigating job losses and lowering inflation seems like a, a really difficult task. If you fix one thing, you immediately need to start paying attention to the other. And this is why we don't recommend artificial manipulation of interest rates on a regular basis like the Fed has taken part in. It would probably be more beneficial for the Fed to actually work on stabilizing prices, which it does have con some control over in some extent through its open market activities and allow the rest of the economy to create or eliminate jobs. Now, for now, inflation is below 3%, and July sales are still fairly healthy, and unemployment isn't out of control. It all adds up to a Fed that isn't willing to move boldly on interest rates and risks being sidelined as events move faster than they can react. Even though the market has recovered its recent losses and inflation is cooling down slowly, we are still looking at multiple economic indicators that are all pointing to a red hot overvalued market. And at Swan Capital, we continue to take proactive steps by adjusting portfolios to adapt to this new volatility that we're experiencing. Now, if you are personally looking for a second opinion on your investment strategy or 401k allocations, we think it is a perfect time to review your retirement plan and make sure that you're on track and prepared for any major market pullbacks. We do invite you to contact us and schedule a complimentary appointment at our office. This is an opportune moment to reassess your investment allocations and financial objectives, especially as the market appears to be experiencing overheating. That wraps up our market recap for the month of August, and we'll come back with fresh updates, but I wanna share with you some of our events that we have had in August and that we have upcoming. Now, here's what I wanna share with you. The August halftime report was amazing opportunity to check in with clients, hear questions from clients, and if you missed it at the AMC Theater here in Pensacola, we have the recording and it has three different camera angles. It'll feel like you were actually there. I want you to check out our YouTube channel and watch that 45 minute plus presentation so that you can get an in-depth uh, overview of where we've been economically and where we're headed over the next six months ahead. Now, we appreciate all the feedback that we received from clients during this event, but I wanna share with you some upcoming events that we have that are soon to be upon us. In September 17th and 19th, we have our Grand Marlin events at Pensacola Beach. So don't miss this opportunity to invite a neighbor, a friend, a colleague that is closing in on retirement because this is a great opportunity for you to introduce them to Scott Malik, the estate planning attorney, Rhonda, our CPA, or myself. So make sure that you call our office to register for these events as soon as possible because the seats are limited. So for clients joining with their guests, please RSVP by calling one 800 848-8768. That's 1-800-848-8768. That's it for this month's Swan Report. And I want to thank you for listening every month to our Swan Report. Please remember that nothing that we talk about here is a recommendation. But if you do want a recommendation about your personal financial situation, give us a call at 1-800-848-8768. And we'll be happy to talk to you soon. Have a great month.